go, forgive me for this being out of sync because I'm recording the audio afterwards, but this here is how to do a spline spine with the twist working. Uh, first you gotta do some joints. I did five because I like a number five, and I just put it up there because I wanted it above the uh, floor, or whatever it's called, the grid. Um, something to remember when you're doing your bones, you need to make sure they're in a straight line. Um, I will remind you later, because this is a second recording that I'm doing, but you need to make them in a straight line. If you do them curvy, if you're in there in a serpentine, or a curve, or a twist, or any weird kind of angles you can make, it won't work. Or if it works, you are a genius and I really need to talk to you, because whenever, whenever I've done it, it hasn't worked. Even when my tutors try it, they screw up and then blame the technology or something. But you need them straight, so in a straight line along your grid, or straight line up. Um, and you can rotate them then afterwards, but you really want to start with a straight line because it's the only way you can guarantee your twist works. I mean, your spine will probably work just fine if you have a curve in it, but when you get to your advanced twist controls, it will screw up. It will start twisting geometry in really weird ways and sort of doing this weird spiral pattern. Um, that any of you who've tried doing advanced twists without a tutorial have probably found, or any of you who've really done it with a tutorial and it's still screwed up, you know that twist, that evil twist, and you never want to see it twist again. So, straight lines. You can rotate it up so it's on an angle, um, like an incline or a decline or something, but don't do it <laughs> in a curve. Just, just trust me. Okay, so yeah, you get your joints, and... What you then want to do is add the spline handle. Um, what you should do if you're doing the spline is go into the tool settings and um, put the number of spans up to two or three or four, depending on how much movement you want to get. And then just click one onto the other, like any other IK. What you really want to do is start naming things, which is a really good way to keep track of all your stuff. And now, please ignore the fact that I'm numbering these wrong at first. I realise in a minute, I promise. Keeping everything named is really a great way to make sure you don't get confused or mix things up or things end up in the wrong order because that is an arse, especially with rigging. It really does help with the spline spine hand um spline spine controllers as well because you want to name things but then not to change the name. So but that's more with the controllers than the buttons, so you can kind of mess that up if you really want. Uh right, with the spine curve what you want to do is you want to put it uh the rotation axis at the bottom of the spine where you want the main control to be so if you move that bit it all moves um, I've done it out on the left hand side because I fancied it and then what you want to do is do clusters so you hide everything and go control vertex and grab them and then create the formers and you just click cluster uh, I have a short key well on a shelf of key on the shelf to do it so I do it quite quickly um, useful to have an, a shelf made up it just makes it a little bit quicker uh, do it with each of them. Uh, you know, best to start from one end and go down because then you just rename them in order, which is a lot more useful. Um, you'll notice in my outliner, I give everything a different name at the end. So my bones or my joints are BN for bone, IK is IK, spine is curve, and cluster is CLFT for cluster. Just makes things useful. And then what I do is I do the number of the thing and how many there are of them, so spine one of five cluster or spine five of five cluster. Everything's in the right order and you never really forget how many you have. Making the controllers now, so I use comet tools, shapes in a sphere. Sphere's good, you can use just about anything you want with them. Just put it above your bones and get out of the way so it will be usually where abo we above your body. Uh, duplicate them just so you have a controller for each of your clusters. Uh, rename them as you do. This is important, you don't want to name these one thing and then change it later because it can really mess up your twisting with your spine, which is pretty much the reason you do this kind of or, or the reason you're watching this because getting a twist is an absolute arse. Um, real thing to remember with that, you want to do straight spines. So you can make it straight and then put it on an angle so it faces upwards, but you don't want to start doing it in twists and turns and serpentines because it's just going to break. Uh, now what you need to do is 
set your rotation axis to each of the clusters. Make sure it's on the cluster and not the bone or any geometry. You also need to freeze all your transforms or zero out or whatever you fancy. If you don't, whenever you reset them to zero, they're going to be popping all over the place and probably overlapping a lot, which makes problems for your animator. And then parenting. So the cluster needs to be under the controller uh, for the corresponding number. Yeah, what you're going to do is just parent things up. Um, I got a bit confused in this, so you'll see me do it in the outlier in a sec because my mind's a little bit frazzled. But 5 goes to 4, 4 to 3, two, um, 3 to 2, 2 to 1. So just a hierarchy starting down at the base where you have your rotation axis for your curve, your base of your spine, if you will. Um, yeah, and if you grab the curve, it all moves together and you can mess about with it, you can see. Um, but at this point you don't have a twist, so you get your IK, go into attribute, attribute editors, and then IK solver attributes. Go down to advanced twist controls, turn it on, and switch scene up to rotation, um, object rotation up, or something like that. Um, um, pauses. What you do is you then put the first controller down at your base in the world up object and your last controller in the world up object 2. This can switch about but you go with this um, first and if it screws up then you switch them. I don't quite know enough about it to explain why but this works. Um, yeah and if um, this doesn't work you need to change the world up type. The other types are object up start and end but I use object rotation up. Uh, you could you could probably do vector, but you really want to stick with the first one of the first two that I said. I don't know why it's the way I was taught, but it works. And that should be your twist. Um, you can sort of check it here. Um, if you rotate one, you should be able to see that the IK handle moves if you've got it set up that way. All the rest of the controllers do. You can watch the bones actually rotate. Um, and what I just do here, I just make a very simple bit of geometry so you can see if it twists it properly. Which it does, but unfortunately I make this too tall, so I end up having a fight to get to my controllers. Just did a quick intro to bind skin, which isn't more anything fancy, but I want it to work. Yeah, so here you can see, oh, ignore this, um, but um, yeah, your controllers, they twist all the way down, um, each of them individually. It, it skinned it quite nicely, actually. Um, you can see it twist that way, that way, and that way. So that is your twist in your spine spine and how you set one up. Um, thanks for watching.